Well, hello there, person. Check it out. Working on the game Wraithbinder, and uh, there's now a main menu. This is actually pretty exciting. So I can save and quit. Um, I, this is, has the skip menu flag, so it actually skipped the menu by default for me. But I can jump back to the main menu here, create a new match, choose how many players I want, whether it's solo or team mode, and then actually even select a character or create a new character. Got this all kind of mocked up, right? Let's check this out from uh, from the beginning. If we were to have started without the skip menu, like this is kind of what, kind of what it might look like. It actually creates a void world. So I've got the ship world, uh, the battle world, and then this void world. So this void world is basically just meant to show almost nothing with maybe just even a blank character so that when you go in here, you can actually select a character and it will change up uh, what character you see on the screen. And you can, use, like when you go and create a character, you'll be able to choose like your initial weapon, whether you want a sword or an ax, maybe something like that. And it'll change the look of your character. So if, um, let's go jump into a match here and let's go to the, oh, it loaded the wrong character there. But bugs, bugs, bugs. So there, uh, it's kind of covered up, but you see that there's the player all big like. What, can we get into some other kind of menu so you can see that clear? Huh. Not, I don't really have it right now. But you see, underneath the uh, level, kills, deaths, assists, we've got a big version of the player. Animated, even. And that's actually animated with uh, some simple voxels as sprites type of thing. So we've got this voxel right here. Um, I tried using these uh, isometric voxels, but it just looked crazy weird. It didn't really work at all because uh, the whole game is meant to be from this orthographic perspective. So these orthographic voxels work really well and look pretty good. So, um, but this is just kind of a mock-up, right? To using these 2D sprites, I can actually create a what what I it kind of mocks it up so I can see what it looks like. Uh, so I'm actually happy with it. I'm actually really excited about the fact that eventually we'll be able to see characters really big like not just small on the screen like they are right now but big and zoomed in you'll be able to see the voxels looking really good uh because eventually i won't use the 2d uh voxel sprite technique i'll actually create 3d voxels and it'll look really neat i've um, even got a 404 not found error if you try and play online mode which there is no online mode yet uh but it's really fun to be focusing on the local version of this game um, I've made multiplayer real-time online games before and uh, it's a heck of a lot of work when you start getting into that uh, multiplayer online phase there's so many bugs that happen because you're because of this or that um, so uh, yeah so I'm saving that for last and what's really great is I can really maximize the game's fun before I go and do all that technical coding stuff that's gonna it's gonna require a lot of technical work to get that multiplayer online working so the uh the local multiplayer is a really fast and fun way to play it and uh what's great is i've been able to play it with friends before local and also uh my family members like especially my my nephews and nieces this it's so great uh because i'm a, i'm a 40 year old adult at this point and People that are my age don't play games as much as they used to, right? Kids play games a lot more than people my age. So it's really neat to have a game that is fun enough for kids to play. And so playing with kids really taught me a lot about this game and how and what needs to happen uh, next. You know what I mean? What needs to happen to make it fun even for them to play? And uh, one of those things I noticed was that it really helps to have outlines on the screen. So uh, I played it a lot with my nieces and nephews and uh, the outlines uh, weren't there before. I This is before before all that. I, was, uh, I frequently had to tell them, you know, they would ask me, hey, what's this? What's this? What's this? Is this thing on my team? Is this thing on my team? Uh, is that person on my team? Who's that? Should I fight them? And so I made these little outlines to show that basically that guy is my enemy because he's red and this is this is me I'm, I'm green and uh, this thing here in my base right here this is green also that must be you know that must be mine um, and this red guy right here that's must be an enemy so it just really clarifies it's that's it's the visual language again we're going back to visual language and and simply using line 
but in this case, outline, to delineate meaning, you know? Uh, so that's a really, really big improvement, right? Being able to clearly see who's on what team, and um, and it also kind of looks neat. For some reason, it looks like they're glowing and stuff like that. I imagine that this will also be something where uh, some players will not want it, so I'll create some kind of option in the render system uh, so that you can, or in the settings, so that you can turn that off. Like, if you don't want to see outlines, you can turn that off. But if I'm, I'm pretty sure this will be enabled by default because it's just so dang helpful. Um, so there you have it. Some progress made on making things a little bit easier to play in local multiplayer, right? Adding this whole main menu is really going to help um, you be able to set up a match with... Whoops, crashed it. Uh, set up a match if you're, you know, just set up a match in general, right? Well, as I was, I've, as I've been playing this with friends in, the, in these early tests and stuff like that, I'll be like, uh, hey, what do you want your name to be? And then I'll go into this saves file and I'll manually edit the name. And then I'll go and like, you know, set up some other stuff and like their their items. Maybe I'll change the items too. Like, oh, hey, do you want to uh, uh, a male body or a female female body? Or what do you want for your armor? Think items like that. So it's just been really fun to start this process of having a main menu that a player can go and control all that stuff themselves without, without me having to be there to make it all happen. So this way, um, heck, I might even be, find my nephews and nieces playing this without me even there, right? <laughs> That'd be sweet. So one step at a time making progress with this game. Love this game. Really, I'm really having a great time making this multiplayer game and it's like nothing I've ever else I've ever made. So. Yeah, excited about Wraithbinder. That's it for now, though. Thank you for watching this video, and uh, we'll come at you with another one later on. Thanks for watching.